HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Welcome to this special edition of HCAM News. It's Tom Nappy broadcasting from Fino Field in Milford, Massachusetts, the home of the American Legion Baseball Massachusetts State Tournament. And on this news, well, I'm not going to lie, there's going to be a whole lot of baseball. We'll get you up to date with what Ashland Legion Post 77 did during this year's state tournament. Could they get their first win? in club history at the state tournament. You'll find out next. And could uh, how did Milford Post 59 do? They are here as well, and they feature several Hillers players. During the opening day of the tournament on Saturday, July 22nd, Ashland Legion Post 77 took on Somerset in their first game of this year's state tournament. Here are the highlights. Tom Nappy here with head coach of Ashland Legion Post 77, Derek Johnson. Coach, beautiful day at Fino Field for the state tournament today. How does it feel to be here? Uh, this is awesome. You know, it's a little nerve-wracking. It's a lot of paperwork in the beginning. You know, making sure the kids get where they got to go and everything. Um, you know, we practiced at the field over there and went up the street to do BP. So now that we're here, kind of settle down, calm the nerves, and get ready to play some baseball. And a great win on Wednesday, Sean Babineau pitching another gem. Uh, can you talk about his performance against Andover and the excitement of the team after they were able to take home that mixed uh, district qualifier to get here? Oh, that was huge. You know, we take it one game at a time, and then, you know, we didn't, you know, we win there, we come here, otherwise we got to play the next day, but it was big for us to get that win, so we had a couple days off till we come here today. Um, now we just start over, you know. No mistakes, hopefully today, get out of here with a win, and come back tomorrow. Coach, uh, Tom Onsey pitching today, uh, how's he doing? Have you talked to him uh, at all? No, just let him go. You know, uh, I haven't. I just let him know he's pitching. He knew that for a while coming in. Um, it's just going to be tough. We're going to have to, you know, nine innings and this pitch limit. It's a little different than what we're used to, so, you know, we we'll have to keep him and make sure we can uh, use him again this week, hopefully. And lastly, Coach, I know you were a bit surprised to make it to this point, but obviously uh, this team has really come together. What's it been like coaching this group? Oh, it's fun. They're awesome. They all get along. They get along very well. They all come together and have a lot of fun. So, you know, hopefully they can keep it up, and it's worked for us this far. You know, coming off, you know, 9-11-1 my first year, 4-11-1 last year. You know, I didn't think we were going to be here, but we're here. And, you know, just some people in the – you know, I don't think we'd be here or don't want us here, but we're here, so let's go. Well, Coach, uh, we hope it's a long week for you here. Best of luck today. Thank you. Hopefully we'll be here all week. Ashland Legion took on Somerset in Game 1 of the state tournament at Fino Field in Milford, and right at the top of the first, the bats got going. Runners leading once again. Solomon glares over at third base and deals a breaking pitch. Hit up the middle. That'll get by the shortstop. Obit around to score, and just behind him is Hornung, and it is 2-0 post-77. A two-RBI single for the cleanup man, Ben Thomas. That ball had eyes right up the middle. All runners leading off, bases juiced for Ashland. This is hit in the air over to left field, battling the sun and making the catch for the out is Meehan, but a run will score for post 77. Ben Thomas comes around on the sacrifice flyout. It is 3-0 Ashland. And he will tattoo this ball into left field. That'll drop in, and that is a fair ball. And a runner is going to come around to score, and that is going to be an RBI base hit for Jewett, who ends up at second base, an RBI double for the catcher. 4-0 post 77. Rossi moves up to third, Pesson is in for the run. Both 
Runners leading on second and third. That ball is going to get by the catcher. Runner from third is going to come around for the fifth post-77 run. Lewis Rossi scores on the wild pitch. This is hit in the air, deep to center field, and that is going to be taken by the win. That'll drop in for a hit. One run is in to score. Second run going to try to score. Here comes Seymour, and he will score as well. It is a two RBI base hit for Jake Obed, and it is seven nothing Ashland post 77. Seven runs in the top of the first. Ashland added more in the top of the second. From the stretch, it's Rossi looking for a second base hit. And we'll put this in fair territory. That'll get by the shortstop. And another post 77 run is in to score. Hit or error, Larry? Base hit in the hole. I agree. Too tough for Martinez to get that one. HKM Weather Center reading at 83 degrees and partly cloudy. No chance of rain, which is what I like to see. Down the third base side, that gets through. That's a fair ball. Another post 77 run is in to score. And Rossi rounded second but went back to the bag. Certainly made the right judgment call there, but it is an RBI base hit for Otzi. Somerset got one back in the bottom of the second, but Ashland held a 10-1 lead until the fifth when Poe 77 added a couple more runs. Wind up and the pitch. Up the third base side, that'll get through. That is a fair ball. Coming around to score another run is Brad Seymour, and it is an 11-1 ball game. An RBI hit for Horning, who ends up at second base, so bid to third. Thomas, two for three today. Two RBIs, a pair of single, and also two stolen bases. And this is a fair ball right side, and a tough play to make, but he will. It is going to be a sacrifice RBI, however, for Ben Thomas. As Obid comes around to score the 12th post-77 run of the afternoon. Jackson Horning over to third. Top of the sixth, Obid brings another one in. Leg lift and the pitch. Up the third base side, off the glove of Baraby, and that is going to allow another post-77 run to score. And then why not some extra insurance in the top of the seventh? And we'll hit this one in the air to left field. That'll drop down. That's a fair ball. Pesson going to round first base. His helmet falls off as he heads the second. And it is a stand-up double for Zach Pesson. Wind up and the pitch. Up the right side. It'll get through the gap. One run is in to score. And that is all that will score as Thomas comes around. But they will take it. An RBI single for Lewis Rossi. Three from the stretch. Deals. Outside, it gets away from the catcher. Pesson going to try to score the throw over. Gets away from Dupree, and Pesson will score the 15th Ashland post-77 run of the afternoon. One and two. Hit in the air over to left center. That's going to drop down for a base hit. Here comes another post-77 run. The throw in is not in time, and Lewis Rossi comes around for the third Ashland run of the inning, and it is now a 16-2 lead. An RBI single for Sean Jewett. Three more runs in the top of the seventh. Ashland takes the mercy-ruled victory after seven innings in the state tournament. It's nine-inning baseball, unless up by ten or more after seven innings. Some of the biggest contributors at the plate for Ashland included Jake Obed, who went two for four with a walk, scored a pair of runs and drove in a pair. Jackson Horning went three for five with a run scored and RBI. Ben Thomas went two for four with a sacrifice RBI, scored three runs, and racked up three RBIs overall. Zach Pesson went two for three with a walk, stolen base, and three runs scored. Lewis Rossi was three for four with a walk, two RBIs, and three runs scored. Sean Jouette contributed going two for five at the plate, driving in two and scoring one. Brad Seymour also had a good day as he went one for three with two walks and a pair of runs scored. 16 runs, 14 hits, one error for Ashland. Post 77 scores 16 or more runs for the third time this season and will play the winner of the Milford-Newton game at Fino Field 
Sunday night with a scheduled 7.30 p.m. first pitch. On day two of the state tournament, it was a very familiar opponent for Ashland Post 77 as they took on Newton Post 440 in the winner's bracket. Newton defeated Milford Post 59 in day one of the tournament, 11 to eight. Could Post 77 defeat Newton for the first time this season? Let's find out. Ashland Post 77 defeated Somerset in game one of the state tournament, 16 to two on Saturday, July 22nd, which meant for the Sunday, July 23rd game, they earned a date with District 5 foe Newton under the lights at Fino Field in Milford. Post 77 lost to Newton both times they played them this season, so would they get revenge? Top of the first, Newton got the offense started early. Going to allow Hodgson the easy advance to second base. A frustrating situation here where you clearly see some runners interference, but the no call has Jake Obid heated. Runner leading off of second, Obid takes a look and now is set to deal. This is hit in the air to right field, and that is going to drop down for a base hit. Being waved around third is Hodgson, and it is going to be one to nothing Newton, an RBI double for Mars Janik. Newton put up three runs in the first, and then added two more in the third, and led five nothing until Ashland came up in the bottom of the fourth. Set to deal the pass in. And he puts this one up the left side. That's going to get through for a base hit. Lead runner being waved around. Here comes Hornung. He comes around to score. And Ben Thomas up to third. It's an RBI double for Zach Pesson. There is some life in that Ashland dugout. As this is up the middle, it takes a couple hops on the grass. Throw over by the second baseman in time, but a run scores. Ben Thomas comes around to score the second post 77 run on the sacrifice RBI ground out by Lewis Rossi. Coker looks at third and deals a breaking pitch. Otzi will get a little boot shot back to Coker who's gonna throw it away over the first baseman's head it goes and Zach Pesson has scored the third post 77 run of the night. Wow, that is a bad error if you're Newton. Coker looks at second and is set to deal. Runner taking off to throw over to third, and it is not going to be in time. They give Ansu the stolen base. That was a close one. Off hitter do up next. Up the third base side, and that is gloved by the third baseman. The throw across is a tough one. It's not in time. It got away from the first baseman. A run already in for post 77. It's a five to four ball game. I'm giving that a single. That was a tough throw to make. Taking off over to second to throw up. Is not in time. A stolen base for Seymour. And I think Seymour did beat that out. That is a good call there by the umpire. Evan has responded. Runner leading off of second, the lineup and the pitch. Down low, briefly got away from the catcher. The throw to third is not in time. The speedy Seymour beats it out. He's, he's angry. He's still hot over that play in the first inning. Coker deals up the first base side, past the reach of the first baseman. Fair ball. The game is tied as Seymour comes around to score. Obin still going over to second base. He's loving it. Five to five. This game has had all kinds of suspense. Up the third base side, past the reach of the third baseman. Lead runner being waved around. Here comes Obin. The throw in is off the mark. Obin scores. He didn't. Ketcher did not give him a lane. And Obid is loving it. The catcher was looking for interference. Payback. But he did not give Obid a path to home plate as he should. And all is well as Jackson Horning over at second base after driving in the lead run. Ronan Bates up to third has no warm up action whatsoever. Up the left side, and that takes an awkward hop past the third baseman. It goes, Bates around to score. And it is seven to five, post 77. The throw over to second to try to get Thomas from the catcher is going to be dropped by the second baseman. A seven run inning, seven to five remained the score until post 77 came up again the very next inning. 
Wind up in the pitch up the right side. That's going to trickle through for a base hit. Lead runner being waved around. The throw in is going to be not in time. Ozzy scores and will throw up to second. Obed safe. And it's an 8-5 ball game. Jake Obed taking out his frustrations on the field. And he gets his second RBI base hit of the game. Votes two on. And this is a very slow roller up the grass. No one's going to get to it in time. And another post 77 run's going to score. The throw home. And they have Obed in a pickle. He runs out of the base paths. And he's out. Two more in the fifth. Nine to five, post 77. But in the top of the eighth, Newton was looking for a comeback against relief pitcher Dylan O'Leary. Whoa. For those of you just joining us, it has been one exciting game here at Fino Field. And that one going to get by Jewett. Took an awkward bounce in front of him, and another run scores. Newton closed in. It's 9 to 7, one out, two on. Jimmy Hodgson at the plate. He deals. And this is hit in the air to right field, and it is caught. Runner from second is going to tag and head to third, and he will be successful in doing so. But did he tag? And no, he did it! It's a double play! A great throw in from center field. Ronan Bates catches the runner, not tagging up, and they get out of the eighth. Bottom of the eighth now, could post 77 add some insurance. Check in at third, and the runner is picked off. He's going to head home. The third baseman bobbled the ball. The throw to the plate is going to be off the mark. The catcher could not lay the tag on Hornung, and it's another post-77 run. 10-7, Ashland. Ashland led 10-7, heading to the top of the ninth. Newton down to their final three outs, but they weren't ready to give up just yet. The catcher. Having a pretty good day at the plate. We'll send this one into center field. That'll drop in for a base hit. Byrne is going to be waved around third and will easily score Newton's eighth run of the night. An RBI single for Gately. <laughs> hit in the air, a high fly ball to center field. Ranging in and making the catch for the final out is the center fielder. Newton gets one run, but it's not enough as Ashland post 77 takes them down by a final of 10 to eight and improves their record in the state tournament to two and zero, oh, and most importantly, stays in the winner's bracket. Post 77 next meets up with Braintree on Tuesday, July 25th, 7.30 p.m. at Fino Field in Milford under the lights. Jake Obid went two for four at the plate, had a walk, a couple RBIs, and a run scored. He also pitched seven and a third, striking out eight, and battled through a very tough Newton lineup. He was all smiles and so happy to capture the W against the Division Five foe. I mean, we definitely in the start of the game, we fell away from our approach we've had all season. Um, and myself included, especially, I come out there, I was way too hyped. I walked the guy on four pitches. Um, I think I threw 30 in the first and then like another like 25 or 30 in the third inning. So I mean, take away those, I, mean, I would have hopefully been able to go online. But, um, but I mean, we, we had a little meeting, um, we got back to our approach and all it took was just scoring that first run, just getting that first guy across. And then right after that, it just kept carrying over. Um, I think we got seven or eight in that inning. Um, so that was, I mean, yeah, that was, that was unbelievable. And I mean, it just speaks volumes of this team. One through nine, we can hit. Everybody can play the field. Everybody has each other's backs and we're all resilient. We don't quit. And we have fun while we're doing it too, which is the best part. Uh, you you uh, certainly seem like you had a lot of fun out there today. That's for sure. Uh, now in that first inning, you got frustrated when it, it was a clear interference uh, uh, with, with the runner, uh, you know, trying to get to first base. It was clearly some interference there. You didn't like the call. You ended up giving up a few runs, but then you seemed to uh, settle down. Um, could you talk about what was going through your head when that call was made? Was it uh, just anger or uh, what was going through your head when that happened? I mean, so when I when I got up and grabbed the ball, I was expecting to see the umpire holding his fist up for an out. Um, I mean, he did. He thought it was he thought it wasn't interference, but you know, they had an umpire up there who said it was. Uh, anyway, um, so I mean, I was I was definitely angry because then it started to spiral. But I I should not have let that call get to me. I should have settled in, stuck with my approach, and just thrown strikes. But I got a little too pissed. 
and I was getting pissed at every everything, my teammates too. Um, but I mean, they had my back and they picked me up when I needed it. And then I was able to get on a roll. And then in the third, I think I let up two more. Um, and I was just, I mean, thanks to like, I mean, Babs was in here, literally. No one's in there every, anymore. No, I get out of here. <laughs> Babs was in here after every inning, like talking to me, settling me, settling me down. And that helped me really gain my composure and keep it when things got rough a little bit. Well, then on the seven run rally, you seemed like you were having the time of your life out there. You were all smiles out there. And I believe we caught you dancing on the mound a few times. Oh, yeah. Uh, I played and beat it. I couldn't, I could not. I was dancing my wind up, you know. <laughs> and it seemed like after that happened, though, you had to go uh, prove something. You wanted revenge. Yeah. Uh, so what was it like to get that revenge? It, it, had a, it had a taste pretty sweet. Oh, uh, yeah. And especially against this team. I mean, that's a very good team. But uh, I hate those kids. I hate every single kid on that team. Um, <laughs> So that was sweet, and it was. I, I find it really funny that uh, they tried to talk to us, talk some smack after uh, after losing in a state state tournament game. So. Uh. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, how's the arm feeling, by the way, after uh, 125 pitches or so? So the arm before this game feeling horrible. Um, adrenaline's pumping right now. It feels great. When I wake up in the morning, I'm not really. I don't even know if it'll be there. I don't even know when I turn over and look. I don't know if it's gonna still be attached to my body. So. Uh, We'll have to see come uh, come 9 a.m. tomorrow. All right. Well, we'll let you go rest up and get ready for tomorrow night's game. Congratulations on a great one tonight, Thank Jake. You. I appreciate it. All right. Excellent. And now uh, head coach uh, Derek Johnson. Coach, that had to be uh, an emotional roller coaster for everyone on the team and you. Uh, what an unbelievable game that was. Can you just talk about uh, what was going through your head throughout this wild, wild game tonight? No, I was excited coming in here. You know, we got the first win. And I think our program's history in the States. Um, I think the problem is, you know, what took him off his, his game is uh, just, uh, you know, just uptight, nervous, exactly. His adrenaline, his heart was going through the roof when I went out there in the first inning. And, you know, we just got to settle down and, you know, get back to our game. And I told him, I go, this is nothing like the, just like the Medford game. You go down eight to two, you're going to come back. You just got to keep fighting. And then they were just all uptight and Babo was huge in the, but Babo was huge. He got Jake calmed down, got through that inning, got through the next inning. Like, and J like Jake said, we get that first run, and the momentum goes, and we just pedals, pedal to the ground. And what do you think led to that seven-run rally? Do you think it was wanting to beat this Newton team so bad that really just gave him the adrenaline to just have a, the, a crazy inning like that to score seven runs? Do you think adrenaline played a part in that inning? Uh, I think it was, and then it was just like, you know, they got back to how we play baseball. You know, we want to have fun. You know, they were quiet. They, like I said, I'm going to say it over and over, uptight. Right. You know, you, we, we're a loose team. And once we got loose, you get that first one, the kids start cheering, loosen them up, and it just, it's effective. Well, Coach, it's been a lot of fun so far, and we're looking forward to more fun games, including tomorrow night. We'll let you go rest up. Congratulations on another W. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up next on HCAM News from Fino Field, we have a whole lot more from the Massachusetts Legion Baseball State Tournament, including a look at day three and four. A whole lot more coming up. Don't go anywhere. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome back to Fino Field for this remote edition of HCAM News. On day three of the tournament, Ashland Post 77 took on Braintree in the winner's bracket. If Post 77 was able to defeat Braintree, they would put themselves in the driver's seat of the tournament with the 3-0 record, but could they get past a very tough Braintree Post 86? Let's find out. On Tuesday, July 25th, Ashland Legion played game three of the state tournament versus Braintree. The winner of this game would improve to 3-0 in the tournament and automatically earn a spot in the championship game. Top of the third inning scoreless game, Alex Kennedy hits a sacrifice flyout which scores a run for Braintree. And now top of the fourth, Braintree adds another run on a sacrifice flyout. The two runs is all they would need as they took the game five to one 
and handed Ashland their first state tournament loss. On Wednesday, July 26th, it was an elimination game versus Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury got things started early with two runs in the top of the first. The two runs is all they would need as Dylan Deegan pitched a solid complete game for post 397. Shrewsbury put up five runs in the top of the eighth to put themselves up 12 to one heading to the bottom of the inning, which meant Ashland had to get within 10 runs to send the game to the ninth. Last year's state champions knock Ashland out of the state tournament with the 12 to one eight inning victory, but post 77 has nothing to hang their heads about as this year's team captured the first state tournament win in program history. Congratulations to Ashland Post 77 head coach Derek Johnson and this year's players on a terrific memorable season. Ashland finishes with 17 wins and 8 losses overall. Also congratulations to Milford Post 59, the team which features several hillers, won in the game following on Wednesday night with strong pitching from Zach Sasitsky. Milford took down Braintree 5-1 and advances to take on Shrewsbury in the state semifinals on Friday, July 28th. The winner of the Shrewsbury-Milford game will get to battle Braintree for the state championship title and earn a trip to the regional tournament. Well, it was certainly a fun season for Ashland Legion Post 77 and a season that the players and coaches will remember for a very long time. That's going to just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you could stay up to date with everything Ashland Legion Baseball, of course, as well as everything Hopkinton at our website, hcam.tv as well as on our Twitter and Facebook page. And you can stay up to date with the Legion Baseball State Tournament as well on our website. We'll certainly keep you updated on what Milford Post 59 does throughout the tournament as well. For all of us here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy, broadcasting from Fino Field. We thank you for joining us on this edition of HCAM News. Take care and be well. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at blackstonevalleywealth.com.